We're recording and live. I welcome everyone. In just a few moments, we will start this meeting of the New Report Historical Commission. I'm just going to allow a couple of seconds for participants and attendees to all um, get on board, so to speak. Um, let's see. We have um, one attendee. Uh, the Custom House is an attendee. That's good. All right. Well, let me officially start. <clears throat> Pardon me. Welcome uh, to this meeting of the Newburyport Historical Commission for the 8th of September 2022. And please be aware that this virtual proceeding, like all such meetings, is being recorded. Uh, we'll start with a quick roll call of our commissioners. I usually do this in alphabetical order. So we have Mr. Biff Baus. I'm here. Thank you, Biff. Uh, Malcolm Conworth, I believe, is absent. I did not see him. I'm going to put him in the absent category. One second. Um, Mark Sendrome. Present. Okay. Joe Morgan. Here. Okay. Christopher Fay is also absent. He let us know that he could not attend tonight. Let me make a new quick note here. And um, the chair, Glenn Richards, is also here. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed someone. And Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Sorry about that, Andrew. That's okay. Andrew Bernhardt. Sorry about that. Okay, good. That's everyone accounted for. So the um, I don't expect any public. Well, let me think about that. Uh, it may or may not be a public comment period. So for the sake of time, I'll, I'll review those rules if there should be a public comment period. Um, <clears throat> so we'll get right into this uh, th tonight's agenda for the sake of time. Uh, hopefully we can keep the meeting relatively short. Um, the demo there was one demolition delay application for 26 Eagle Street. And the applicant has revised their plans to the extent that a further review by the um, uh, Jennifer Blanchet, the uh, zoning coordinator or zoning administrator, has determined that they do not even need a review by the Historical Commission. So they, their attorney has submitted a letter asking that they be allowed to withdraw their application without prejudice. So if someone would be so kind as to move that they that that motion be withdrawn without prejudice, we can vote on that. So move. Okay, that's unlike Mark Syndrome. Is there a second? Seconded. In. Joe. Okay. Okay, sound like it might have been two seconds there, but that's okay. Uh, and I'm gonna, um, I'll talk more about the my research into Robert's rules a little bit later on, but one of the things that was mentioned is that after a motion, is, and a motion is made and seconded, the moderator or chair repeats the motion, uh, which I haven't necessarily been doing, but I think that's a good idea. And I'm also gonna continue the practice I started doing recently of after the vote is complete, uh, kind of restating how that vote turned out and why. So anyway, uh, the motion uh, that's on the floor is to accept the withdrawal of the application for 26 Eagle Street without prejudice. So uh, going around uh, for the roll call vote, which we need to do because it's a Zoom meeting. Uh, Andrew? Yes. Ben, okay. Biff Baus? Yes. Thank you. Mark Syndrome? Yes. Okay. Joe Morgan? Yes. Okay. And the chair. And interestingly, according to Roberts, the chair doesn't even have to vote, especially in this case, but uh, the chair also votes yes. And these, um, well, again, I'll talk more about that later. So that's a unanimous uh, affirmative vote, and that motion is passed, and that application is withdrawn. The other order of uh, general business concerns the Customs House. And I uh, just to keep me honest here, Caitlin, am I missing anything in the um, – is there anything, uh, order, anything else other than you know this the custom house signage? Because I know there was um, that correspondence uh, from um, that's been talked about. You know, Forest Street. I didn't see that on the agenda, and and so forth. So is it, is the only other major item on the uh, the custom house signage? 
Is that correct? That's correct. This is okay. the only other item on your agenda other than the chair and planning director updates. Okay. So uh, very briefly to introduce this, uh, I believe we do have uh, someone to speak from the custom house and I see they have their hand up. Um, so I will turn, I'll, uh, they will be uh, speaking in just a moment, just so that everyone on the board understands what this is about. The custom house Maritime Museum, uh, formerly the U.S. Customs House, is under a preservation restriction. So there are a lot of uh, restrictions on the structure, inside and out, by the way. This one even has uh, some restrictions on the interior, which is a little unusual. Anyway, um, pursuant to that, when they make changes to the appearance, it needs to be reviewed. Um, and we're being asked to determine that uh, the change or the slight modification they wish to make will not have an adverse impact on the historical value or character of the structure. So who do we have uh, speaking on behalf of the Custom House? Uh, Christopher Silva, Executive Director of the Custom House Maritime Museum. Okay, hi, greetings Christopher. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, why don't you, well, I'll, I, I, did you, is this your presentation that we're looking at here? It is. Okay, why don't you go ahead and, and explain to us what this is all about. Thanks. So this is an existing building prior to the buoys being put in in uh, 19, I believe 1979. As you can see, there is an existing plaque on the building that was put there by the commission in 1975, naming the people within the community and historical preservation that were on the board that renovated the building. Um, the location of the plaque is about six actually, feet up. Actually, sorry to interrupt you, uh, uh, Chris. Looks like the picture we're looking at now still has the NRA poster on it. That yeah, that's still it. So that's that's old. That's 1975. Right. And so our new plaque will be going just below that NRA plaque. Uh, well, that NRA plaque isn't there anymore, right? It's now, it has a bronze plaque. That's... Bronze plaque, but that's the current location. You can't actually. see the buoy. The buoy's blocking it now. Okay. Okay, actually. Uh, there you that's... go. So okay. it'd be going right below that um, NRA um, committee plaque. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Go ahead. And now you have kind of, kind of a, a rough look at where where how it would look and where it would be located. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if I can join, this is uh, Jack Santos. I'm also with Chris, and I'm the, uh, the board chair at the Custom House. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that first picture was more of the, the older site, and where that NRA sign was. We we now have a plaque that commemorates all the organizations and people, the mayor. Uh, the uh, Newburyport Maritime Society that helped uh, renovate the, the building back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. so the, the prior, the slide with the, uh, Caitlin, if you get the slide with the full, um, uh, the full sign, uh, slide number three, that is actually what the sign looks like that we're proposing to put on uh, that part of the building just below the current bronze plaque. Uh, this one is about 24 inches wide by 16 inches tall. It's slightly smaller than the bronze plaque that's there. The bronze plaque that's there, if you go to the next slide, is um, is situated in such a way that it's really pretty high. And most people don't even notice it, much less read it because of where it is. Uh, and we're proposing that uh, uh, the sign that uh, the Preservation Trust has donated to us, you know, there's they've had a... Uh, 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 someone who uh, has uh, uh, donated the money to, uh, to, to put together this new plaque, which highlights not only that it's a custom house, which is not clear on the, the current sign, but also that it's got a famous architect uh, that is also not clearly uh, uh, stated on the first sign. So we want to make sure that we got those two pieces, the, the custom house and the architect on the sign. It also reflects the kind of signage we have throughout the town from the uh, Newburyport Preservation Trust. So we're more than, you know, we're so uh, proud and happy that the, they've uh, decided to, to donate that sign. And what we're suggesting, if we go to the next slide, is that it's just placed just below the current sign, which is at about eye level. And it is the most walked 
part of the building along Custom House Way. Uh, and I'm hoping that, you know, once that sign is there and you see it and it, and it clearly states, you know, who, uh, who the architect was, what the building was, what year, uh, you know, it was built, the eyes will then get drawn to the top and people will actually read the sign on top. But uh, what we're here tonight is just to ask, uh, per the regulation, that uh, the Historical Commission review this proposal of signage and, uh, and rule that it really does not detract from the architectural and historical significance of the building. And you can okay. see it now. And that's, uh, I think, and that's about it. I, Chris, I don't know if I, I jumped in there, just wanted to make sure I got those points across. No, nope. if you wanted to. Perfect. Add. Spot on. Spot on. Okay, um, let me turn to uh, my commissioners here to see, um, why don't I just go around to see oh, what comments folks have. Um, just kind of randomly here in the order that they're just showing up. Um, why don't I start with, with Mark Sandrone. Uh, any, any comments? No, 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 no major comments, except for the fact that it looks like it's a little lopsided, but that may be the way that it's photographed or pasted in. Yeah, I suspect I suspect it's an artifact of the way it was sort of photoshopped in. Would you, uh, Chris, or I think the other person's name I, I for, forgot. Can you confirm that that's just? Um, yeah, this is Jack Santos. I, I, I photoshopped it. You're absolutely right. Uh, I don't do this for a living. <laughs> Not a problem. Yeah, <laughs> nothing gets by us, Jack. Um, how about? Uh, thank you, Mark. Was that it? That's it. Okay, Biff Bows. So, uh, how about you? Yeah, I, I appreciate that the uh, sign is uh, reflects the other preservation trust signs around town and then is using a material um, that's, I think, a little more appropriate for the building. Um, so I, I think I really I do appreciate that. And I think it, I don't think it would detract at all from what I'm saying. Oh, thank you, Biff. Sp uh, uh, speaking of materials, I didn't, it looks like it's bronze or brass or something, but I don't don't remember you hearing that mention. What is it actually made of? It's yeah. a, it's a bronze, a uh, black wash or a dark wash. So it will weather similar to the plaque above. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, it, like I said, it looks like that. I just want to confirm it. Okay. Um, see, Andrew, any thoughts? It's yeah. excellent. I'm fine with it. Okay. Uh, Joe Morgan? Uh, no comment. I think it's fine. Okay. The I think that's everyone, right? The my my only I, I'll tell you, I just have one potential uh, concern. Uh, I'm trying to think. The if you put it okay, the plaque, well and that's if you putting it there, I I, I don't know how I assume it's gonna be bolted on somehow right yes. yes so it would require you know drilling some holes into the granite to do that no. we're actually going to be gr drilling right into the mortar joint that's why we placed it where it is so every uh, other, every other block up is a split joint i see so that yeah be drilling and spacing into the into the mortar not into the grant so we won't be actually uh changing the face of the building Oh, okay. So they'll just be either one or, or maybe two bolts that are vertically aligned with the mortar yeah. joint. I yeah, get two, it. Two, yeah, two bolts with uh, uh, what they call like, you know, medallions on top of it. So you want right. to... Yeah, if you, if you go to slide three, it, it might show where the bolts are because we had it specially designed for that. And there's mm -hmm. one below the uh, eight, yes. the other off at the middle of the, at yep. the top. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, and that's every... every uh, piece of advice we've gotten has been, you know, put it in the mortar. Okay. And there'll be some sort of little escutcheon or, or what, rosette or something to- A rosette over, over every bolt head. Right. Okay. Um, well, I didn't hear, why don't we, um, uh, would one of my fellow commissioners care to uh, submit a motion that the, the um, Newbury Report Historical Commission does not find any adverse impact of um, the proposed sign and proposed placement of the sign. Yeah, I move to uh, approve the proposed 
uh, design for the new plaque for the custom house. Um, okay. I, can, I can second that. Okay, hang on a second. Um, Joe, I'm going to, thank you. Uh, that was Joe and um, Andrew. Um, and I'm, gonna, Beth. I'm sorry? It was Biff. Oh, it was Biff, I'm sorry. If no worries. Sound sounded a little similar. Okay, thank you, Biff. So, um, Joe, I'm gonna make a slight modification with your permission in restating this, that the commission is uh, approves of the new plaque and its position and its proposed position, is that okay? Oh, absolutely, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, that's the motion. And so we'll go through a quick roll call here. One second. Starting uh, as usual with Andrew. Um, yes. Vote. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Biff Baus. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Biff. Mark Sandrone. Yes. Okay. Joe Morgan. Yes. Okay. And the chair is as agreeable as well. So that's a unanimous vote uh, passing or approving that motion. And um, what I usually do in this case, um, uh, Jack and Chris is I'll in my notes to the planning office uh, of, with the decisions and so forth of tonight's meeting, I will let them know that um, this has been approved, you know, per the preservation restriction, all that. So, and I'll, I'll if I have, um, I think I had Jack, I think I have your email address. I can copy you on that separate, you know, little note to that effect. So you have, um, verification that uh, you're not in violation of your preservation restriction and you're you're good to go, so to speak. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thank you to the board. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> On behalf of the board, you're welcome. Okay. Um, Quick note on correspondence, uh, nothing else for us to cover tonight other than I just want to mention that we're posting this letter. You'll see it posted uh, for our next meeting from a, from a couple of residents that are near the alley uh, just off Pleasant Street that um, goes by the um, Battlegrounds coffee shop and all that. It's, it, it's not clear to me what they exactly want us to do, maybe support their uh, initiative to try to do something about graffiti there, but anyway, we can talk about that on the next meeting. It's, I only mentioned it tonight to uh, hit, tip you off to take a look for that. Um, so uh, before we get to the final business of uh, the meeting, the minutes and all that, let me tell you what I um, discovered from um, this book. If, if you can see that, uh, Robert's Rules of Order and complete with a commentary. Uh, actually, it, it's interesting. This was in response to Marx and Drone's um, point about sometimes posing a motion in the affirmative can be confusing if it's clear that just about everyone on the board is feels that, uh, let's say, a house is not historically preserved. It seems odd to, to have a motion that it's the house is uh, has, should be preserved but then everyone vote no type of thing um so in the uh actual rules it doesn't i couldn't find it where it explicitly said but in the um uh, kind of exegesis or the explanation of the rules it does specifically say and i'll quote here the motion should be worded in the affirmative whenever possible so i thought that was interesting uh however I think you all know if you've attended any of these uh, meetings of these boards, planning boards, EBA, this board, even to a, some extent, the city council. I think the city council is a bit more formal, but none of us, re none of those volunteer boards strictly follow the Roberts rules. For example, you would have to, you know, request the floor before you even making a motion and, and all of that. We don't go through all that formality. Um, I did find a couple things in there, though, that I think do would be worth applying uh one of them i mentioned up front at the beginning of the meeting and that i'll continue to do and that's after a motion has been made and seconded the uh, moderator or chair uh restates the motion in fact that technically at that point the motion become is referred to as the question and in the according to the official rules of order uh any order of business is first introduced with some motion Motions made and seconded, it's stated as the question, and then there's the debate and discussion followed by the vote. 
uh, this board and the other boards, as far as I know, and I see Andy's joined us, so maybe he can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure boards typically will, uh, it, well, like in our case, will have, will introduce a particular topic such as, uh, you know, a demolition delay hearing or whatever, we'll have a deliberation and a discussion of it. And when we are at the point where we kind of feel that we understand where things stand, we will, there'll be a motion and a vote on the motion, which, um, you know, uh, that's the way we've been doing it all along. I, th and I think that's the way it was done before I was chair as well. And the, uh, if you're, if you're paying any, <laughs> any attention. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, love Robert's rules, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I, uh, sorry. It's a great discussion. Um, you know, I, as you mentioned, um, the ZBA chair actually on a routine basis notes the Robert's rules and, uh, motions being made, you know, in the affirmative, um, and then having votes after that, obviously there's a even more of a desire with a board like a zoning board of appeals, traditionally thinking of it almost like a court, um, they tend to do it even more strictly to that. But as you pointed out, um, depending on the convenience of uh, the discussion, you certainly could do it the opposite uh, form of the motion. But I think the reason why, of course, Robert's Rules is set up that way is to try to provide clarity to um, for everybody as to what's being voted when you do something with it sounds like a double negative, it might be confusing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, meaning not approving and all that. So at any yep. rate, um, yeah, as, as you pointed out, the board has some discretion there, but um, the general assumption is to, as long as it's clearly uh, stated the motion, whatever that may be. And as, as you pointed out, Glenn, I agree that restating what the motion is or what the question is, is very helpful for everybody before they take their round of, of call, call votes. Yes, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I started doing that tonight, I, uh, and I'll I'll continue to do that, and I'll try to uh, make the motion as clear as possible, so everyone understands a what the motion is and what the significance of a yay or nay uh, vote is. Um, and am I correct, and Andy, that it's um it's not unusual to have a, some deliberation and discussion followed by the actual motion and vote rather than make the motion and then have the deliberation. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, you know, the planning board, for instance, will have a good amount of deliberation before they take a vote. Okay. Um, uh, whereas by comparison, we sometimes will see uh, the city council actually go slightly differently. They generally will have uh, just because they, they like to have the formal process outlined before they have deliberations, they will often um, have a motion that's put on the floor. Uh, and then continue with deliberation about that particular motion. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think from from that's from the city council's perspective. I think that is is probably generically, you know, sort of makes sense from their view. But for the historical commission, I do think it, it may make a more sense to have that deliberation first, like the planning board, mm -hmm. and then move into the formal uh, motion of some type, just so that you have the, every member has the benefit before making a motion of input from other members. Okay. All right. So that's uh, what came of. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate that. Um, so. Um, I guess you can consider this uh, sort of a hybrid thing. I, I will, I think we should, I'd like to see us uh, try to be consistent and unless it really is awkward, you know, uh, have the motions in the affirmative and, and we'll see if um, with the clarif clarifying restatement and so on, um, we uh, avoid uh, the potential confusion. I also think that uh, it's going to help that we've got the revised flowchart and um, uh, voting sequence that we have already discussed in prior meetings that uh, um, I think you uh, when we had that discussion, everyone seemed to be very much uh, in favor of those changes and think that that was going to be a significant improvement. So we'll look for, you know, I think we'll be, I think we'll be good. So um, Mark, I hope I, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're completely 100% happy, but I hope that that at least provides some uh, uh, context. <laughs> I'm for not going to make any comments. So. <laughs> okay, that's perfectly. As, as you all know, um, within within certain bounds, you know this, uh, especially meeting like tonight when I, our attendees are now zero, so um, I we get slightly more casual than than perhaps we will at other times. Okay, but anyway, let's move along with actual business. And we do have a couple more votes. And that is the first of that is on the approval of the minutes. These would be the minutes of the 25th of August. Uh, so let's see here. I'm gonna give me a second to line this up. So hopefully you had a chance to review those. Uh, um, I thought that uh, Gretchen did, did a particularly good job when she summarized the uh, discussion about the new flow chart. 
about you know the the sequence of votes and what they all meant uh, it was a very good and very brief summary so um now let's see was who was not here for the 25th of august can uh, i th i was just here partially so. okay so so andrew i will put you down as an abstention uh biff right. you were here right uh and yeah mark were you here last week i meeting? was indeed here okay and joe i think you were here right yes i was here Yes. Okay, and I was here, and I think Malcolm was sort of partly here, so um, I'll assume Malcolm will be, well, he's not here tonight anyway. Okay, so let's go around for the vote on this. So, Andrew, I'll put you down as an That's abstention. Okay. Yep. Uh, Biff Baus, uh, did you have a chance to review the minutes for, and are okay with them? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, and so um, um i'm sorry there was, i'm sorry hang on there was no motion made um <laughs> is there uh, there was is there a motion to approve the minutes of the 25th of august i can make that yes, motion. No okay i think i think if said i can make that motion right <laughs> i did yeah. and then mark mark said so moves well mark i'll put you down as a second is that okay that's fine okay uh okay now uh if your vote on that yes okay mark Yes. Okay, Joe Morgan. Yes. Yes, and the chair is is yes. They were very well done. So the only other uh, order of business is if anyone wants to go home, so to speak, um, a motion to adjourn the meeting. Um, oh, oh. Business, Caitlin, um, I believe that we had the updates from the chair, planning director. I believe that uh, Director Port had an update. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, then we will not adjourn just yet. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, what did you Thanks. have for us? Yeah, uh, if I could real quick, thanks, uh, Caitlin, for the reminder. Um, just a, uh, a reminder uh, or an update. Uh, I know that the commission last looked at the Market Landing Park Visitor Center building uh, and provided an advisory opinion to the planning board. Um, the, uh, I just pulled up the city's website here. The planning board uh, is taking up the building uh, review. Uh, they have a site plan review for the park project. Uh, that's relatively straightforward. Um, but the building itself, obviously, there was some discussion about how that looks architecturally and how it fits in the downtown. Um, so there was some concern expressed by the Historical Commission and informally as well by the planning board prior to the formal filing. So uh, the architects have done a little bit more work. Um, what I wanted to do is just point to you to where you can see the more recent renderings we've gotten from Sasaki. Um, and also a uh, what is I think is an important memo for you to to review in context and it's one that's been given to the planning board so uh, just to let you know where that stands if you want to look at it um, and the, the framework for this by the way the context for this is um, under the ordinance just like anything else and we saw this with the IFS here, uh, project project uh, the ordinance requires the historical commission to or gives an opportunity anyway for the historical commission to provide an advisory opinion to the planning board for the downtown, for instance, and you have the same thing for the DCOD uh, with the ZBA. Uh, here, the you've already given an advisory opinion, uh, and just to be clear, the ordinance does not technically require any circling back to the historical commission. Although uh, we tend to think, as a general best practice, that it makes sense to kind of circle back wherever possible and, and still provide um, you know feedback to the board. So, where the applicant, in this case, the city, has come back to the board and will be presenting. Um, the initial filing and then updated renderings to kind of see where that's come. Um, you may want to chime in on that or weigh in on that either as individual or as a commission, um, but they will be taking that up uh, on the 21st. So I'm just showing you where you can find those materials and where that meeting is. Um, they will be taking this, that's one day prior to your next meeting. They'll be taking up the uh, hearing for the building. Um, and this is just the link, of course, to that, that page, as you see on the city calendar, just like your meetings. Uh, underneath the agenda, just like yours, uh, we have posted various different documents. Here, what we have is the site plan review, SPR, as well as the PB, planning board, special permit, SP. Uh, those are the file numbers. Those are just, uh, you know, again, links to our online applications. You might be familiar with our OpenGov page where you find all that stuff. Um, and so, again, just helping you to navigate in case you want to see it. Um, underneath the files there for this particular permit that's on that agenda, uh, if we scroll down, we can see there the arc, uh, elevations and related architectural drawings. Uh, that has been updated. So there's a original version uh, back in June, and then there's the updated version that was uploaded today. Um, that was given to, to us by the architects on August 26th. Um, and 
Uh, one thing that, uh, you know, if you want to take a look at that, you can take through the, look, the renderings yourself. I'm happy to, to go further if you want. But um, the one other thing that I would um, draw your attention to uh, in relation to that is uh, there is a memo. Um, it's actually shown here as a memo uh, with the title of con continuance. Uh, but within that memo um, is, and I just wanted to point to this, some important um, uh, documentation relative to city council direction on the design of the building to date. And the reason I point to you, that to you, uh, and I've already done it to the planning board here as, as part of a memo to them, is there are some design constraints that are somewhat, uh, you know, impeded by or are limited by the design direction we've already received by the city council that has jurisdiction uh, in large part because of um, the land that's under the city council's jurisdiction right now with the mayor and the appropriation of funds that they have towards this project. Um, there are also, uh, there is one other ordinance that comes into play and that's the city's net zero ordinance. So there are some, uh, the important point I'm trying to make here is as you look at those renderings, whether or not you weigh in or the planning board, you know, um, where they where they go at that discussion on the design, there are some design elements or aspects of this that are somewhat limited right now. Um, so if there is a desire to change that, and again, this is determined by the planning board with advisory from the historical commission, um, that may require some further revisit by the city council. And so um, it's not necessarily something the planning board can assign unilaterally during permitting uh, because there is also the role of the city council. So uh, I just wanted to make it clear here what those limiting factors are and because they do have some relationship to what the board uh, or historical commission may think is a better design of the building, meaning roof right. line, uh, you know, dimensions of the building, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, there's 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 what we can, there's the wonderful building we can imagine. And then there's the reality. Right, Andy, the. Um, um, uh, does the, the is, does the city or the planning board expect the commission to issue a new advisory report, Andy? Uh, they have not yet indicated. Uh, we do know, I think as some of the members here know, we do know in the case of the Institution for Savings, which was, of course, understandably, was much more controversial, I would think, than Market yep. Landing Park. I think uh, so. Most people tend to agree <laughs> that Market Landing Park, it's sort of more like a finally let's do it kind of thing as opposed to, um, you know, controversy, let's let's say. Um, but because there was some concern about the compatibility of the design, um, I just wanted to draw your attention again to to that context coming in here, which is the same context that plenty board members have. While they do have the review of new structures in the downtown, and we're not likely going to have a whole lot of those. Um, but because this is a new structure, even though it's relatively small in size, it's a park amenity, essentially, and it is replacing the, uh, again, I would encourage you to take a look at the trailer structures that are there today, um, because it's planned to replace that, you know, when the, when the funding comes in, um, it, it's not a significant size of a structure, but, be, but there's some, um, you know, one can look at the secretary's guidelines and, and one might read that as being somewhat subjective, depending on the person who's looking at the guidelines and how they're being applied in a given instance. So you, we might have, for instance, amongst commission members or planning board members, um, nine planning board members, varied opinions about what is exactly compatible or appropriate in the downtown, um, what might be, you know, neutral, what might be considered uh, truly distinguishing it as a new feature versus trying to make it compatible and look like the old varied parties might interpret those guidelines on a given instance slightly differently. So um, it may not be possible, for, quite frankly, to satisfy everybody with exactly every element of that. Um, but I do, we are trying to do that to the best of our ability. Sasaki, the design team is trying to do that. Um, but they are somewhat limited by what the, what the options are that they have available. So that memo summarizes a little bit of where the council came from and what the plans are going in there. Mm. Um, they've tried to make some changes uh, that are shown there. And we'll see where the planning board comes out. Uh, they may ask for the historic commission to provide uh, some feedback as it did with the IFS. Um, I just clarify that that isn't obligatory. Um, and right. it, isn't, it isn't necessarily obligated that the city or, or the IFS, for instance, come back to the historic commission. Um, I think it makes sense just a better practice to uh, to try to do that sort of thing and, and um, try to coordinate between all the relevant bodies. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you have any feedback, whether it's the day after or whatever, um, you know, they may continue that hearing to further review the architecture. Mm -hmm. But um, but I just wanted to draw to your attention because it's in between meetings. Uh, the materials are now there and we don't know what other supplemental information we get. It'll be posted there as well. Um, but right now we have some slight variation. They've tried to make the structure look a little bit, little bit more like the Harbor Master building, given some of the design constraints they have about the structure. Okay. Thanks, Andy. And, and that memo is sort of helpful to know that, you know, as, as to some of the background or context behind why, <coughs> or the, ex, the just, well, just the context around how the building ended up the way it does and, and what right. some of the design constraints were that were kind of imposed on the architectural firm. Right. Um, uh, just one quick 
question that you might not know the answer to this. Did the city council indicate why they preferred wood versus brick on the siding cladding? Um, I mean, I'd have to defer to them. My understanding was that it was that there was more reference to having something that was, say, subordinate and really uh, more recognized as a park feature. And the idea, uh -huh. I think, was that it, it might be perceived more like an ancillary structure if it wasn't the same brick. Mm -hmm. uh, it would also perhaps not, you know, try to imitate something that's there. Right. So um, we we kept hearing more references to making it look like the Harbor Master building or doing something a little bit more, um, you know, um, you know, uh, subordinate in, in, you know, scale or treatment or whatever. Um, and so I, I wouldn't necessarily point to the Cashman Park restroom facility that it was put in by the toll folks. It's a relatively small structure. It's not really, you know, notable in any way. It's just kind of a basic feature. Um, but that's a park building for public restrooms, and it's a relatively benign, you know, small structure. This one has a little bit more prominent location, of course, um, but they, you know, that's, we've tried to put glass windows facing the street. Um, we've tried to hide, you know, the solar panels on the roof, and, you know, we have debate mm -hmm. about what, what folks like or don't like, but um, given some of the design constraints as outlined in that memo, um, they're, they're trying to accomplish as best they can. For, for instance, we're screening on the site with landscaping, the restroom doors, um, because none of us really like the idea, I think, visually of, of having a row of restroom doors. Um, but that is a design constraint that ultimately came out of the um, determinations of the council. So we have to try to abide by that, you know, at, at where we are. Um, and, and we don't know how, how likely the council is to want to revisit some of the decisions they made over a period of several yeah. years or months. Yeah. Um, so that being the case, uh, what we've tried to do to mitigate that, irrespective of the tr final treatment of the exterior of the building, be it shingle or, you know, wood collaborate siding or whatever, um, is to have landscape screening regardless. So the site plan yeah. uh, that the board is looking at does impose, would impose um, landscape screening around that, that row so that the, the pedestrian, right. other, unless they're actually standing there waiting for the restroom right in front of the door, they're not going to really have to worry about seeing that yeah. visually. Okay. Well, thanks, Andy. And my apologies for, uh, Caitlin did mention that you had this update and I, it totally. No worries. We just, and again, it's, uh, it wasn't something we knew about, uh, necessarily in terms of time frame for the agenda, but we did want to note it, um, just to kind of keep you up to speed yep. given the, um, plan was meeting in between now and your next meeting. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So, um, but I am glad that Andy brought this up and I would encourage those of you who I know there was some uh, fairly significant opinions on the board, on this board about the that design. So you're certainly welcome to uh, uh, make the planning board aware of your, your thoughts and opinions uh, on that um, through either public comment or submitted written comments or however you might like to do it. Okay. Is it okay to adjourn now? <laughs> so move. Um, who said that? I think it was Mark. Yes. Okay. Seconded. Joe. And Joe seconded. Okay. Any deliberation on that? Please no. <laughs> okay. So I guess not. Okay. So let me one, give me one second here. And we'll do a quick roll call. And starting with Mr. Bernhardt, your vote yes. on adjournment. Yes. Okay. Not very controversial, I guess. Pish no. Baus? Oh, yes, sure. Okay. Oops. I had my finger on that. And Mark Syndrome? Yes. Okay. Joe Morgan? Yes. And the chair is in agreement. So that brings this uh, Newburyport Historical Commission meeting to an end. Uh, thank you. Once again, as always, for your attendance and attention and your dedication of your pr precious personal time for these meetings, it is very much appreciated. And I bid you good night. Thank you, Chair. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you.